and gentlemen, questions like this arise when we have a problem. And it is almost impossible, if not impossible, to solve a problem we, when we cannot ident even identify the underlying issues that constitute it. I will be, throughout my speech, first defining the, uh, these all purposes that the prompt, uh, uh, that the prompt uh, uh, refers to. Then we, I will be focusing on a scenario and I will be suggesting how will we legalize the, uh, marijuana and then I will support this with three main arguments, that of zero tolerance, security, and attacking the real problem. Now, talking about the purposes, which will be divided into two main uh, realms, that of medical and industrial, and the most controversial one, the recreative one. Where, where should we do that? Focusing this on a specific scenario, I would focus on Mexico because society is actually asking for these regulations and because Mexico is a main marijuana production, producer and also trafficker. How are we going to do this? First of all, we're going to allow the cartels to produce and distribute to special pharmacies and we will be allowing users to get a marijuana license. Yes, that, this sounds a little strange, but how will this work? First of all, there will be internal restrictions within. There will be no advertisement of the product, there will be no consumption in public areas, and this will be penalized as an, an administrative uh, uh, offense. There will be quality control, and this marijuana license should be got when citizens are over uh, the age of 18. It can, they can get it removed if they uh, present behavioral prob uh, problems. And it depends on the offense, and also they, it will be based on uh, quantity control. How, why should we do this? First of all, we can see in a history of failure of zero tolerance regulations. We, can, we know that these are ineffective, they're based on deterrence. And many people, including Michel Foucault, a very re renamed philosopher, state why deterrence no longer works. But let me give you a clearer example of that. We try to use deterrence to stop people from smoking. And we try to, 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 to do that through fear and extreme measures like putting uh, dead fetuses on the, the, the packages. But you know, many of you will go out from this forum and smoke a cigarette. Because you know, throughout time, these deterrent me me measures and these emotional measurements do not really work. And, uh, and measurements that are based on fear are very ineffective because people stop getting afraid of surveillance after a, a, a certain amount of time and then they start on to uh, go to these uh, practices underground. <clears throat> then, my second argument, that which, uh, which talks about security. Why are, we, uh, why are we talking about negotiating and pacting with cartels? First of all, to avoid a reta retaliation that we would be presented if we uh, assume to legal and we and, and we talk about legalizing marijuana, and uh, second of all, because we've been doing that throughout history, but we've been doing that uh, underground and hidden uh, as governments. Uh, and now we believe that it is the moment to do it with transparency because ultimately we're doing that not to defend the interests of the government, but to defend the security of citizens. In the end, drug dealers don't want to see a world where people are getting high. They just want their money. Because to them, the, the business of marijuana and the business of drugs is just a market and it's just a business. And that's how we are assuming to treat it. If we, if, if we can agree and negotiate successfully with them, we will end up with a major problem that we can find in Mexico. That is the loss of lives and the insecure environments that the war on drugs declared, not by the cartels, but by the state of Mexico and by the government, has actually propagated. And third of all, I would like to, to talk about the real problem. Well, re the real problem, ladies and gentlemen, is not drugs. The real problem is behavior, the behavior of people. Because people who can handle responsibilities are very likely to abuse essentially anything. So let's imagine a world free of drugs. I bet the teenagers who can't handle responsibilities will tell you, you know what, if you get this solvent and you s inhale it really hard, you can get a good high. That can happen and that is happening now with solvents and with other substances. 
So what do we essentially need to do? We need to teach societies and we need to teach the world to live with drugs. We need to teach them that whenever they abuse anything, even if it's McDonald's burgers or any, even if it is uh, any other substance, they will harm their, their individual and they can also harm other people around them. So essentially, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that the problem is not that we have drugs out there, but the problem is that people don't know how to live with them and that we need to attack this from the marrow. And that does not come from prohibition of drugs. So the impact of these arguments are that essentially we are really dealing with the problem, with the underlying problem that we haven't been able to identi identify so far. And we have to start believing in people's capacity to decide upon what's good and what's bad for them. Because ultimately, it is, people will find a way to make their own choices. Let's just, let's just trust that these will be educated ones. Let's just support them so that they can make educated choices from now on. And in the end, we will also reduce the violence propagated by, uh, by the war on drugs that was not declared by the cartels, but that was declared on the, uh, by the government in an attempt to actually solve this war problem that is not being solved. So what have I told you so far today? I have told you that actually we are not tackling the problem in the, in, in, in the right way. We are thinking that a, a drug-free society can happen, first of all, which is not possible, and second of all, that if we eradicate all drugs, then we'll be safe. No, I'm telling you that we need to legalize drugs for all types of, of purposes, that, those that I explained in the beginning of my speech, and I'm t I have told you that we have to teach people how to live in a world with drugs. We need to trust their choices, and we need to tr tr trust their capacity, because in the end, they are the ones who elect most of the democratic governments, and therefore, if we think that they don't have the capability to decide upon what is good or bad for them, then we, are lo we, we have completely lost all hope on what, 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 what moves on this, uh, this world, which is the society. Thank you.